The Hot Zone by Richard Preston, a non-fiction thriller published in 1994, emerged two years after his article titled Crisis in the Hot Zone was featured in The New Yorker. Preston is a frequent writer on subjects related to Ebola, bioweapons, and emerging viruses. In the Hot Zone, he delves into the introduction of Ebola into the human population and narrates a chilling incident from 1989 involving an Ebola-like virus, the Reston virus, spreading through a monkey quarantine facility near Washington, D.C. The book has served as the source material for the movie Outbreak, 1995, and the National Geographic television drama The Hot Zone, 2019. Preston's narrative emphasizes several themes, including the illusion of viral agency, the dehumanizing nature of viruses, and the ethical dilemmas surrounding virus research. Richard Preston's The Hot Zone primarily explores the history and emergence of various biosafety level 4 pathogens, notably Ebola. Biosafety levels are sets of containment precautions used in laboratories to safeguard scientists from the diseases they study. Biosafety level 4 agents are the most perilous, as they are exceptionally contagious, have a high fatality rate, and lack known prophylactics, treatments, or cures. The gripping aspect of the hot zone stems from the real-life account of an Ebola outbreak among primates in a monkey facility located near Washington, D.C., during the 1980s. The narrative revolves around the genuine fear that this highly infectious disease could potentially spread to the nearby human population. The book is divided into four sections, The Shadow of Mount Elgon, The Monkey House, Smashdown, and Kaidem Cave. The opening section of The Hot Zone narrates the story of Charles Monet, a pseudonym, a French expatriate who begins displaying symptoms of illness shortly after visiting Kaidem Cave on Mount Elgon in Kenya. The book vividly describes the disease's progression, starting with the early stages where Monet complains of symptoms like headaches, backaches, red eye, and vomiting. Continuing with Preston's vivid descriptions, the disease is portrayed as a horrifying force, liquefying connective tissue, inducing profuse hemorrhaging from every orifice, and leading to the widespread deterioration of internal organs. Merely two weeks after exposure, Monet reaches a hospital in Nairobi, where he collapses in the waiting area of the casualty department. Dr. Shem Musok, a young physician, becomes infected when Monet vomits in his face, marking the onset of the Marburg virus. Dr. David Silverstein, Musok's colleague, plays a pivotal role in helping him battle the disease. Silverstein learns from fellow researchers about the Marburg virus, a rare and scarcely known phylovirus affecting both humans and other primates. In 1987, a Danish boy named Peter Cardinal succumbs to Marburg after visiting Kaidem Cave, directing scientific scrutiny towards the cave as a potential reservoir for the host animal carrying the Marburg virus. American scientist Eugene Johnson takes the lead in organizing an expedition to Kaidem Cave in 1988, with hopes of finding infected animals or identifying the host. Unfortunately, their efforts yield no success. Within this section, various vignettes revolve around biosafety level 4 agents. These include the historical account of the first identification of the Marburg virus in Marburg, Germany, the narrative of UG, the first person to succumb to Ebola Sudan in 1976, and the story of Mayinga N, a nurse who contracts Ebola Zaire after treating a patient who ultimately perishes from the disease. Mayinga initially denies her symptoms and spends two days in the city before returning to the hospital, inadvertently exposing an unknown number of people to potential infection. Additionally, the shadow of Mount Elgon introduces Lt. Col. Nancy Jocks, a veterinarian and scientist working for the U.S. Army during the 1980s. Jocks is involved in an experiment related to Ebola and inadvertently cuts herself while at home, preparing dinner. Subsequently, while engaged in an experiment involving an infected deceased monkey, Jocks faces another precarious moment when the protective glove covering her injured hand tears, almost exposing her to contaminated blood. The book's second and third segments, The Monkey House and Smashdown, revolve around Usamariad's role in the mass culling of hundreds of monkeys in Reston, Virginia, in 1989. A monkey facility near Washington, D.C., receives a shipment of 100 wild monkeys, and within just four weeks of their arrival, 29 of them perish. The facility's veterinarian, Dan Dalgard, conducts examinations on the monkeys and sends samples to virologist Peter Jarling at Usamariad. The evidence points toward an infection with Ebola Zaire. 
With level 4 precautions in place, the army undertakes the daunting task of euthanizing the remaining 450 monkeys. This operation encounters several challenges, including moments of potential contamination. There is an incident where a monkey, insufficiently sedated, awakens and struggles with one of the scientists, as well as an escape by a monkey from its cage. Additionally, there are episodes where the pressurized racial spacesuits worn by the scientists tear or malfunction. Ultimately, it is discovered that the monkeys harbor a strain of Ebola that does not manifest symptoms in humans, eventually named Reston disease. In the book's fourth section, Kaidem Cave, Richard Preston embarks on a journey to Kaidem Cave, fully clad in hazmat gear, culminating the narrative. While the cave is inhabited by various animals that could potentially carry the disease, Preston is not searching for the host, but rather aiming to bring his story back to its origins. Preston concludes with a warning about the potential hazards of similarly dangerous diseases, such as the AIDS virus, and underscores the likelihood of future outbreaks, some possibly deadlier than those witnessed thus far. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.